What's up guys, welcome back to News Wave. Well, it's finally the day the PlayStation 5 is now out and exciting stuff because now Microsoft and Sony are both officially into next generation. I saw a lot of people from around the world who are, who are ahead with their time zones posting images of their PlayStation 5 in their living room with shots of Spider-Man or Demon Souls being played. It's exciting stuff right now. But let's say you were someone who didn't get a chance to get a pre-order in for a PlayStation 5 and you wanted to get one as soon as possible. Turns out you might have another shot today even to pick up a PlayStation 5 and we'll talk about where where you can do that and some of the strategies even you can kind of go over to pick one up, at least give you a good shot at it anyway. Also, we get to talk about Microsoft actually responding to one of the strangest things that took place yesterday, this weird issue where Microsoft's Xbox Series X decided to take up smoking randomly and again, they actually responded to it. It's uh, the cherry on top almost for 2020. And we'll go over all that and more today, guys. As always, if you enjoy these videos, make sure the like button helps out a ton. And if you're brand new here, hit that red subscribe button down below. We're gonna start today with Godfall. Godfall is also out today. And uh, the hype's kind of fallen off for that game if they're really, I mean, the big hype for it was that it was the first PlayStation 5 game, I believe, that was shown. That was during the Game Awards, because it came up and it was like PlayStation 5 console exclusive or something at the time, and Jeff Keighley made a big deal about that, but since then we've seen it several times. Every time I saw it, it just kind of fell off a bit more and more for me in hype, and uh, well, on Metacritic you can see the score for it now. Currently sitting at a 61 with uh, a lot of the issues seemingly around it being a live service that we feel like we've been through before, like Destiny or even Anthem, I've seen that brought up and that it's very repetitive over time. Yeah, not not surprising. Live service games always get out of the gate slow. Like they, especially recently, they seem to get low scores and then over time they build content on top of it and then people will revisit it with big expansions. It gets a little better, a little better, a little better. These really are like 10 year projects. My only concern is, I don't know if Godfall has that much time in it. The best bet for this game, because it probably will end up being one of those like bargain bin games like in, in like half a year is that it goes to PlayStation Plus and tries to build a community with like a month for free for people to basically try it out with their PlayStation Plus subscription. But yeah, not a great start out of the gate for Godfall. Also, we have to go over very quickly 13 because uh, I don't know what happened here, but 13 released. There was a, a remake. They wouldn't even really call it a remaster. But it's a remake because they butchered this. I, I, I have no idea what's happened here. Anyway, there's there, uh, there's a trailer for it showing off the visuals. There are screenshots. And for some reason, they decided to take the game, which was highly stylized back in the day on the uh, original Xbox or the GameCube, wherever you played it. It looked like a comic book come to life through cell shading and some of the different panels they would have put up there, depending on what was happening. It was a first person shooter, but it was very unique because of all of this. However, the remake, the new one that just came out this week, eliminated that and basically turned it into what people are calling now almost like a Fortnite look. And it's not great. And to go even further than that, it appears that somehow it's worse than the original when it comes to even AI. Like, okay, so it's one thing for it to look worse for a lot of people who really enjoyed the original, but like the, the game itself doesn't even play well. It's so weird. I don't know what happened here, but if you go over to Steam, you can see there's over 400 reviews on it currently. It's sitting at very negative. And uh, this was this was developed by Play Magic and published by Microids. I don't know what they can do to fix this one. Sure, they could probably patch and maybe fix up some of the AI issues and other glitches in the game, but like the overall look, I think, is what hurts it the most because a lot of people remember it for being super unique with its kind of comic book aesthetic, and that's just like gone now. What a shame. Oh, and I see a lot of you guys ask about Elden Ring at times when I'm scrolling through the comments. Well, we finally have an update on it. Here's uh, an interview of Phil Spencer with GameSpot. And you can see right at the top there, Phil Spencer has played quite a bit of Elden Ring, calls it Miyazaki's most ambitious game. That's right. Phil Spencer is uh, kind of saying, hey, it's it's actually in a fairly playable state right now. He said, I've seen quite a bit of it. And this is leading me to believe maybe we could see it at the Game Awards. I think that would be a good spot to basically reintroduce it to us after it debuted in 2019 E3. It's been a while, hasn't it? And people keep asking about it. How far off is it? I kind of think it's turned into a next generation game, right? Series X, PlayStation 5, Series S. And I kind of feel like it might just miss out on 
the last gen or current gen, whatever you want to call it now, we're in this weird time period, but the PS4 and the Xbox One, I kind of feel like it's shifted to next generation, but the Game Awards would be a great spot to show it off, and I, I still think it's probably not out until like 2022, but at least we heard something about it. It is playable. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the PlayStation 5 ordering information, specifically how you could possibly get a PlayStation 5 today, depending on how the websites hold up and the shopping carts, all this stuff that could break during checkout ends up going over for you. Now, we know last night, there were several stores that did put up orders online at midnight Eastern time. Game GameStop did this. Target did it, I think Newegg did it, but Newegg was weird because they put the information up, but they said it won't ship for two to three weeks. They have, uh, I'll look elsewhere if that's the case. And then Games, GameStop also took PlayStation 5 systems and did their really cool bundles that we all love, where it's like eight or $900 for everything combined. Now, sometimes the deals aren't bad if you're already buying Spider-Man and Demon Souls and another controller and the headset or headphones. You might be like, yeah, okay, I was already gonna buy all that stuff. But then you go and buy it and it's like, has what, Destruction Derby All-Stars or whatever? Like. No one wants destruction all. It's gonna be on PlayStation Plus next year. Like what? Okay. Anyway, the here's where we are now. If you missed all of that, there there's still a possibility that your local Target could have PS5s available. The way you can find this out, if you go to a, a stock checking website like, like Pop Finder, just as an example, they also have, I believe, stock information for Walmart, but that's not updated as well as Target, it seems. You can check based on your zip code, if any of the targets around you still have PlayStation 5 disc units or the digital units. Now, the digital units appear to be uh, much less in stock. I have talked to some people at some of these different retail stores uh, around the, the world, and a lot of them are saying that the digital version of the PlayStation 5, it, like for every six disc units they get, they get one digital. Like it's, it's not a great ratio for that. So I would immediately just think, okay, I'm gonna get the disc unit right now because these systems are already scarce as it is. So Target, check that on PopFinder. After that, however, Walmart put out an announcement. They're going to do waves of pre-orders today, actually four hours or so starting after this video goes up. You can see this tweet here. It says, starting at 12 p.m. Eastern time, the day you've all been waiting for is almost here. The PS5 is coming 11-12 for online orders only. If you missed out on pre-orders, you'll have four chances to order throughout the day. That'd be 12 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Eastern, and then 9 p.m. Eastern time. Now, there is still kind of some confusion around this. And I have to be honest, I'll find out probably at 12 p.m. Eastern when I go to check myself. It We're trying to figure out if you will be able to pick this stuff up in stores because it seems that GameStop was doing that where you order online and then they will have an appointment set up for you and you would go in to pick it up. Remember, what we had with Sony and what they announced is that they will be providing stock to these retailers. It's just they don't want to have big lines at these stores. Big crowds are trying to work this out. And the easiest way to do that is have people order online, do pick up in store, and then set up times where you can just go by and get the system and then leave. Now, that should be a good way to go about this. The problem we run into is how many people hit the website all at once and how many bots hit the website at these times. I mean, now it's all scheduled, they're ready to go. So what you wanna do is make sure you have your account set up, make sure you have a card on file. That way you can have the checkout process as fast as possible so that you can try to get in, get the system in the cart and get out. Don't even throw accessories, don't throw any of that stuff in there, just the system, then go back for the accessories. I mean, honestly, when you go to pick the system up, they might just have them out on the store shelves since the accessories have been in stock since the 31st of October. So remember, take a shot, Walmart, maybe we'll get lucky, Target, always possible. But those are the two that I would really look at because most likely by now, GameStop is completely wiped out. Next up, let's talk about a strange situation that was unfolding throughout the day. Had to do with the Xbox Series X and some defective units that got out there. Now, I will say it makes sense that the disk drive itself could have some issues after millions or, or million or so go out. Right, like the disk drive is a point of failure. There's a lot of moving parts in there. Sure, that is believable. But when you start seeing videos pop up online, like you see Nebelian tweeted this out, it was proven fake. But there were <laughs> videos of the Xbox Series X just projecting smoke out of the top of the vent. And I went over this in a bit more detail on the second channel. But after I put that video out, Microsoft responded to the situation. It is like, 
it's like peak 2020. Like I said, we're at the end of 2020. I didn't think things get any weirder. And uh, this right here, this tweet is the cherry on top of the whole year. Check this out. This is uh, <laughs> something that Microsoft had to put out apparently. We can't believe we have to say this, but please do not blow vape smoke into your Xbox Series X. Yes, that is where we are now in in the year. The system comes out. Everyone's really excited to play, I don't know, Assassin's Creed, maybe doing Watch Dogs, maybe go back to Halo or some of your backwards compatible games. And, and Microsoft and Xbox has to let us know not to blow smoke into the bottom of our systems, our $500 systems. That's why we bought them, right? To blow smoke into the bottom of it. Yeah, that, it, it was a whole thing that was put out there and after people started to realize it was just a fake thing that people were putting up online and then it was used back and forth in these strange online console war things on Twitter and on message boards and stuff. Yeah, just vape smoke. People were playing around with it, blowing into the bottom or leaving, I guess, their vape pen next to it. I, it it's, it's a weird year, okay? We're almost into 2021. Maybe, maybe we won't have to deal with vape vape pens and vape smoke into our consoles then. Oh, and on a good note here for Microsoft, Phil Spencer did tweet this out saying, thank you for supporting the largest launch in Xbox history. In 24 hours, more new consoles sold in more countries than ever before. We're working with retail to resupply as quickly as possible. You continue to show us the connective power of play is more important than ever. And you know, there were a lot of people picking up the Xbox Series X or the Series S. Uh, Twitter was covered in it. People were taking pictures of their new Xbox system. It was a lot of fun. People were really excited. I know there's not that big exclusive at launch, but Microsoft has done a lot of work with the backwards compatibility side and Game Pass is massive now with all of those EA games being added in to Game Pass Ultimate. So, you know, it, it, it's, I think, a good launch for Microsoft because they did go uh, worldwide now with this, whereas before they launched in like even Japan way late for the Xbox One. So they're trying to tackle all of these different countries, the different spots to release the Xbox in. As Phil Spencer says here, their largest launch ever in Xbox history. So seemingly so far so good for Microsoft when it comes to the release. Now they have to continue the momentum in 2021 with some games. Next up, let's talk about Capcom and Mega Man, specifically Mega Man 11. I've been curious how this game would do overall with sales going forward, especially when compared to other Mega Man games, because I want Mega Man X9. I know people want Mega Man Legends 3. I want that too, but let's be realistic here. Mega Man X9 is probably something they will more be more inclined to tackle because it won't be as big of a project as a Legends 3 or a Battle Network or any of that. And it would kind of make sense after doing Mega Man 11 to maybe shift over and try the next Mega Man X game. Well, turns out Mega Man 11 is now the third best-selling Mega Man game ever. This is according to Capcom's own charts. And no, that doesn't mean that Mega Man 11 is this massive seller. It sold more than a million copies, but it's nowhere near what you get with the Resident Evils or Monster Hunter World, which has eclipsed 16 million units already, which is outrageous by the way. That is crazy. Uh, Monster Hunter World, super, super successful there. But we can see Go Nintendo even brought up some of the comparisons here showing that compared to Mega Man Battle Network at 1.35 million and Mega Man 2 at 1.51 million, Mega Man 11 being at 1.3 million, it puts it right behind the second best-selling one with Battle Network 4. And you know what? It is very possible if Mega Man 11 continues to go on sales and all of this, that it could pass Battle Network 4. I don't know if it'll touch Mega Man 2, but I think it could at least become the second best-selling Mega Man game. And I hope that shows Capcom that while the Mega Man series isn't this huge seller, there's still some life in that series, and I think people are still interested in it. And hey, Mega Man 11 was good enough, I think, to bring the series back to its roots, and I would like to see them continue to do other things with Mega Man X9, sure, Battle Network, Legends 3. There's still a lot of things they can pull from with that franchise. So here's hoping these sales were enough for Capcom to step back and say, okay, let's start working on something else with Mega Man. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Samus Returns on the Nintendo Switch. This was, again, something really weird that happened yesterday after it was spotted on Nintendo's website where there are those little skins that you might put on your Joy-Con controller, your Joy-Con grip, the Switch, your dock. There was a really cool one that they had on there that had like the Super Nintendo cartridge for Super Metroid and it turns your dock into that. It is, it is pretty neat looking. But as people started to scroll down, they realized something. One of the images that showed them in use with a Switch 
had an image from Samus Returns on there. And this was like on Nintendo's website. Sure, it was for like this, this skin that was being sold, but it was still on Nintendo's website. And that of course led to speculation that it was accidentally leaked out at that time that Samus Returns was going to the Switch. Something we've been speculating on and assuming would happen that they would just port it from the 3DS to the Switch because it seems like easy money to a lot of us, but you know, Nintendo, they're gonna Nintendo. However, I do think a new 2D Metroid is still in the works and could still be showing up maybe in 2021. So we'll keep an eye on that one, but it does not appear to be the case here. That does not look like it was a leak. In fact, you can see here over on Twitter, we have Shine Sparkers who goes a bit more in detail here saying, according to the Gist Gear website, controller gear officially licensed Nintendo Switch and skin and screen protector set, Super Metroid's Nintendo Switch product has been available since 2018. Other products in the range feature screenshots from relevant games connected to the product that have been superimposed to the Switch. With all of this in mind, we are confident that this isn't confirmation of Metroid Samus Returns arriving on Nintendo Switch. And yeah, this would just be them marketing and just literally Photoshopping an image from Samus Returns on there because it fits the theme of it being Metroid skins. So unfortunately, this wouldn't be an actual leak. Now, if like what happened with Kirby, remember that we had the, the latest Kirby game that, that just popped up on Nintendo servers and showed up on their site. If that happened, then yeah, we'd be like, okay, well that just leaked. So I guess Samus Returns is showing up at some point. But as of now, nothing really concrete here. And uh, while it makes sense for a lot of us, I wouldn't be surprised if Samus Returns got moved over and just poured to the Switch from the 3DS. Nothing so far, but we'll keep an eye on a 2D Metroid maybe coming to the Switch next year. And we'll finish up with a comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from uh, Philip saying, Google is giving away Stadia controllers. I don't know, they might have to throw in some cash if they want me to take it. You know, going through the comments, I saw a lot of people saying that. And also on Twitter, I saw a lot of people saying that. People I told, I was like, hey, you have YouTube Premium. You might as well just go get a Stadia Chromecast and controller and all of this. It, it's there, it's free. Like they even covered shipping. I didn't even have to do that. It was just like all zeroed out. We'll send it out to you next week. That was it. So it was really weird to me that people were still like, uh, I, I'm, maybe I'll get around to it. I don't know. Do I, do I really want to have that laying around? That's how bad of a job Google has done selling people on Stadia. They're having a hard time giving these things away. Like it's so... Weird. <laughs> now, the thing here is there's also that concern that Google just is, is gonna be done playing around with Stadia like next year and they'll just they'll just stop with Stadia and all of your purchases. I, I don't know what happens to them then. What they need to do is establish confidence as soon as possible with a full exclusive that looks halfway decent. That's what they really need. And unfortunately, I still think that's at least a year off from even being shown, let alone released. And uh, Stadia just released way too early and Google just was not ready for that release at all. And uh, I guess it's just gonna be a lot of streaming and more convenience factor rather than any big exclusive to kind of pull you in. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Where's the PlayStation 5 releasing today? Did you pick yours up or are you still looking to try to grab one from somewhere? Let me know if you have any luck today, of course, down in the comments. Then, did you ever think you would see Microsoft on their Xbox Twitter account tell people not to blow vape smoke into their new $500 Xbox Series X. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.